I will call to order the January 19th regular Housing and Redevelopment Authority meeting in Richfield at 7 p.m. And would you please call the roll, Administrative Assistant Dubois? Yes, thank you. Chair Seppel? Here. Commissioner Elliott? Here. Commissioner Regan Gonzalez? Here. Commissioner Freeze Daniels? Here. Commissioner Sandal? Here. We have all members present. Thank you. Thank you. So the first item of business is consideration of the election of officers and the designation of the assistant to the secretary for the Richfield Housing and Redevelopment Authority for 2021. So I'm going to open the floor for nominations for chair. I move Mary Supple. Second. Are there any other nominations? <clears throat> Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? All right, hearing none, we'll close nominations. All in favor of Mary Supple for chair, please say aye. Or I guess we have to call the roll, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Thank you, Chair Supple. Aye. Commissioner Elliott. Aye. Commissioner Regan Gonzalez. Aye. Commissioner Breeze Daniels. Aye. Commissioner Sandal. Aye. We have five eyes. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we would have vice chair. I would nominate Commissioner Breeze Daniel. I will second it. Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? All right, having asked three times, we will close nominations. And we're gonna be voting on Commissioner Brace Daniels for Vice Chair. Thank you, Chair Supple. Aye. Commissioner Elliott. Aye. Commissioner Regan Gonzalez. Aye. Commissioner Brees Daniels. Aye. Commissioner Sandal. Aye. We have five ayes, thank you. Thank you, next we will be voting on Secretary. Are there any nominations for secretary? I nominate Maria Reagan Gonzalez as secretary. Second. All right, are there any further nominations? Are there any further nominations? Are there any further nominations? All right, we've asked three times. So now we're gonna vote on um, Commissioner Maria Reagan Gonzalez as secretary. Thank you, Chair Supple. Aye. Commissioner Elliott. Aye. Commissioner Regan Gonzalez. Aye. Commissioner Breeze Daniels. Aye. Commissioner Sandal. Aye. We have five ayes. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we're going to vote on appointing the assistant to the secretary. And I'll nominate um, Administrative Assistant Dubois. Is there a second? Second. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded and we'll take, oh, are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? All right, hearing none, we'll take the vote. Thank you, Chair Seppel. Aye. Commissioner Elliott. Aye. Commissioner Regan Gonzalez. Aye. Commissioner Breeze Daniels. Aye. Commissioner Sandal. Aye. Five ayes, thank you. All right, so thank you to everyone who is serving. Next, we're going to have the open forum. Um, Administrative Assistant Dubois, do you wanna explain how that works? Yes, um, to participate in the live open forum, we have a moderator at City Hall and you can call in. The number is 612-861-0651. And as you call in, the moderator will assist you. And we currently have no callers. All right, we'll wait because I know there's a little bit of a delay as it goes out on broadcast cable and things.
All right, is there anyone else who's called in? No, Chair Supple, we have not received any calls. All right, then we're gonna move on to approval of the minutes of the regular HRA meeting of December 21st, 2020. So moved. Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Sandal and seconded by Commissioner Rika Gonzalez to approve the minutes. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, we'll call the roll. Thank you, Chair Supple. Aye. Commissioner Elliott. Aye. Commissioner Regan Gonzalez. Aye. Commissioner Breeze Daniels. Aye. Commissioner Sandal. Aye. We have five ayes, thank you. All right, our next item is approval of the agenda. So moved. Oh, second. second. <laughs> All right, it's been moved by Commissioner Sandal and seconded by Commissioner Elliott to approve the agenda. Any discussion? All right. All in favor will take the roll. Thank you, Chair Supple. Aye. Commissioner Elliott. Aye. Commissioner Regan Gonzalez. Aye. Commissioner Vries Daniels. Aye. Commissioner Sandal. Aye. We have five ayes. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Executive Director Stark. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you, Chair Supple and Commissioners. The consent calendar contains several separate items which are acted upon by the HRA in one motion. Once the consent calendar has been approved, the individual items have all been approved as well. Tonight, we have two items on the consent calendar. <clears throat> Item A, consideration of resolutions designating official depositories for the Housing and Redevelopment Authority for 2021, including the approval of collateral. Item B, consideration of a resolution approving up to $13,500 in financial assistance for the West Hennepin Affordable Housing Land Trust to mitigate hazardous materials at 7132 Columbus Avenue South under the new home program. That concludes tonight's consent calendar. Thank you. Looks like you're on mute, Chair Supple. Thank you so much. Uh, would someone like to um, move the consent calendar? I'll make the motion to move the consent calendar. All right. I believe it's been moved by Commissioner Regan Gonzalez and seconded by Commissioner Sandal to move the consent calendar. Is there any further discussion? All right, then please call the roll. Thank you, Chair Supple. Aye. Commissioner Elliott? Aye. Commissioner Regan Gonzalez? Aye. Commissioner Breeze Daniels? Aye. Commissioner Sandal? Commissioner Sandal, you are on mute. Aye. We have five ayes. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we're going to move on to consideration of the adoption of resolutions regarding the modification of the redevelopment plan for the Richfield redevelopment area, the establishment of 2020-2 tax increment finance district, EMI, and establishment of an inner fund loan for advance of certain costs in connection with the 2020-2 tax increment finance district, EMI. Executive Director Stark. Thank you, Chair Supple. Uh, Assistant Community Development Director Melissa Paleman has been serving as the project manager for this particular project, and I would ask her to give the staff report. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, John. Chair Supple, members of the board, PLH and Associates has been working to redevelop the site at 101 66th Street East since 2016. On June 15th of last year, the developer presented a revised concept to the City Council and HRA that would reduce ground floor commercial space in favor of affordable rental units, and they asked the HRA to explore the use of tax increment financing to help make that project feasible. Preliminary feedback was generally good, and the HRA approved a preliminary agreement with the developer on July 20th. Revised land use plans were then approved by the City Council on October 13th. 
The project site has been uh, evaluated by LHB Corporation, who has determined that the property meets the statutory definition of a blighted site and thereby would qualify as a redevelopment, redevelopment tax increment district. While there's no statutory requirement for um, affordable housing in a redevelopment district, the HRA's inclusionary housing policy requires that developments receiving financial assistance either preserve 20% of the units for households earning 60% or less of the AMI or contribute 15% of the available TIF to the Housing and Redevelopment Fund. As proposed, the development would reserve 20% of the units proportionally al allocated by unit type as affordable. Financial analysis has been conducted by Ellers and Associates and Rebecca Kurtz is here tonight. Tonight, you're being asked to um, consider a modification to the redevelopment plan and approval of a tax increment financing plan for this district. The plan that's attached to your packet um, includes a map showing where the district would be located, a summary of the HRA and city's authority to create that district, a description of its classification as a redevelopment district, requiring that more than 50% of the existing buildings are structurally substandard, an identification of the, the original net tax capacity that the base taxes would be calculated on, those taxes will be distributed to all of the local taxing jurisdictions, just as they are now, including Hennepin County, Richfield Public Schools, and the city. Uh, 5.8 million, approximately $5.8 million is established as the maximum TIF that could theoretically be collected in the district over its maximum lifespan of 26 years. The types of uses eligible for expenditures, including acquisition, affordable housing, and other qualifying improvements, such as structured parking, and the but-for analysis, concluding that the resulting redevelopment would not reasonably be expected to occur solely through private investments. So while the TIF plan identifies the maximum amount of tax increment that could be generated and the maximum expenditure on eligible uses, it does not commit the use of those funds. That commitment is contained in the in the contract for private redevelopment, which is the next item on your agenda. That contract would commit the city to providing 90% of the available TIF up to a maximum of $971,000 to the developer as a TIF pays you go note to assist them in, um, in financing those TIF qualified expenses. Under our current assumptions and rates, this uh, amount would be provided to the to the developer in as little as 12 years, at which time the district could be decertified. And then 10% of the TIF would be retained by the HRA for reimbursement of expenses, including staff costs. Uh, the HRA has already incurred expenses related to administering this district. And so the HRA is being asked to approve a resolution approving the use of up to $100,000 from its general fund to advance payment of such expenses and the establishment of an inter um, through the establishment of an interfund loan. Uh, that's all for staff's report. Like I said, Rebecca Kurtz is here tonight as well, and the two of us would be happy to answer any questions. Does anyone have any questions? Um, all right, um, Commissioner Sandall. I believe you're muted. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, okay. Um, the abbreviation for the TIF district is, I don't know if it's an abbreviation or what, but EMI, um, could you tell me what that stands for or where that came from? Perhaps the developer would be able to best answer that. Um, Paul Lynch is on tonight. Paul, are you there? I can see you, but we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, sorry about that. I also called in, so I'm not sure why it doesn't work. But uh, the Emmy stands for Emily Lynch, my daughter. She's always been um, uh, inspiration for me and the projects I worked on. And uh, this was just uh, an opportunity to, to call it Emmy, short for her nickname. Thank you. Yep. 
Are there any other questions? All right, seeing none, would someone like to move the resolution? Commissioner Regan Gonzalez. Sorry, I'll move the resolution. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded to number one, adopt a resolution approving a modification to the redevelopment plan for the Richfield Redevelopment Project Area, establishing tax increment finance district number 2020-2 ME therein and adopting the tax increment financing plan thereof. Number two, adopt a resolution authorizing an internal loan for advance of certain costs in connection with 2020-2 tax increment finance district ME. Is there any further discussion or are there any further questions? All right, then Administrative Assistant Dubois, could you please take the roll? Yes, thank you. Chair Supple? Aye. Commissioner Elliott? Aye. Commissioner Regan Gonzalez? Aye. Commissioner Vries Daniels? Aye. Commissioner Sandel? Aye. We have five ayes, thank you. All right. Thank you, and thank you to everyone that um, moved this project forward. Going on to item number five, it's consideration of the adoption of a resolution approving a contract for private development with PLH and Associates, Associates, excuse me, 6605 First LLC, and authorizing the issuance of a tax increment limited revenue note related to the construction of a 42 unit mixed use project at 101 66th Street East. Executive Director Stark. Thank you, Chair Seppel. This is kind of item B to what you just considered. And again, I would ask Melissa Palman, staff report. Thank you. Chair Seppel, members of the board, as John said, this is a continuation of the item that we just discussed. Uh, this is a consideration of the actual contract between the HRA and the developer. So this will establish some of the um, conditions and the, the details of the development. As we said before, it'll include 42 rental units and approximately 1,300 square feet of commercial space. The developer will make improvements totaling approximately $8 million, and that will include construction of the three-story building with underground parking. The developer will pay or reimburse the HRA's upfront costs to create this contract to establish the TIF district and other administrative costs. And then it details the 20% of the units that will be held um, in reserve for households earning 60% of AMI or less. And it details the fact that those units will need to be proportionally allocated by the type of unit um, in the development. Uh, the TIF district is projected to last approximately 20 years, as I previously noted. The HRA will again withhold the first 10% of that tax increment to reimburse, um, reimburse us for administrative costs. The maximum amount of TIF that will be available to the developer is $971,000. And then just as a reminder, um, in a TIF district, the property owner does continue to pay their taxes on the pre-redevelopment property values to all of the local taxing jurisdictions, um, as has been the case uh, prior to creation of this TIF district. The property owner also pays normal property taxes on the value of the new construction. These new taxes can then be returned to the developer to reimburse them for costs necessary to make the project financially feasible while still meeting the affordability requirements. And again, the developer is here, Rebecca Kurtz is here, and I'm happy to answer any questions you might have about the contract. All right, are there any questions? Commissioner Brees Daniels? Uh, no questions. I think just more commentary of I'm glad to see this project is is moving forward. It's it's we've been talking about um, this area for a while. And so it's very exciting that we were able to come to this solution um, to have affordable housing as well as business and um, get a project moving forward. So thank you for everyone who worked on it. Other questions or comments? Um, I just wanted to clarify, it said, I believe that 
you had to like have a certain percentage of each um, size unit, but that we could have a two bedroom unit if we wanted to, is that correct? Chair sub, I'll have to find um, that exact point in the contract, but it does allow the substitution um, of a two bedroom. I, be I believe what it says is that a two bedroom can be substituted um, for, is it the, I'm sorry, let me pull it up here and make sure I've got the details, unless you had the section right there. No, I'm going by memory, I'm sorry. Okay, sorry, me too. I just know that there had been concern that we'd have more um, larger spaces and I thought that it was good to have that option. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair? Right. It's on page 11 in the contract. Right, any two bedroom unit may be substituted for any of the specified units um, except the ADA accessible unit. All right, cool, thank you so much. Thank you, Commissioner Sandal. Sure. Any other questions or comments? All right, would someone like to move the recommendation? So moved, Commissioner Regan Gonzalez. Second, Commissioner Bruce Daniels. All right, it's been moved by Commissioner Regan Gonzalez and seconded by Commissioner Fries Daniels to approve a resolution approving a contract for private development with PLH and Associates 6505, excuse me, 6605 first LLC and authorizing the issuance of a tax increment limited revenue. Any further discussion? Please call the roll. Yes, thank you. Chair Supple? Aye. Chair Elliott? Aye. Commissioner Regan Gonzalez? Aye. Commissioner Freeze Daniels? Aye. Commissioner Sandal? Aye. We have five ayes. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we're going to move on to other business, and that item is to designate the designation of the Community Development Director, John Stark as the Executive Director of the Richfield Housing and Redevelopment Authority for 2021. Director Stark, would you please report? Yes, thank you. So in September of 2018, uh, Community Development Director John Stark, myself, was initially appointed to the Richfield HRA to serve as its Executive Director. That appointment was reaffirmed at the January 21st, 2020 meeting. Uh, that term has now expired and it would be appropriate for the HRA to designate an executive director for the year 2021. Uh, and with that, I would stand for any questions you might have or any, any tests of strength or whatever <laughs> criteria. All right, are there any questions for executive director Stark? All right, Commissioner Sandal. Um, I don't have any questions, but I'm gonna move it and then we can talk about it. Um, I'd like to move that we designate Community Development Director John Stark as the Housing and Redevelopment Authority Executive Director until the first regular meeting is conducted by the HRA in 2022. Second. All right. It's been moved and seconded. Um, is there any discussion? Commissioner Sandal? Yes, I'm happy to, to, to rise in support of our, our wonderful John Stark as Executive Director and look forward to working with him for another year. Thank you. All right, Commissioner Regan Gonzalez. And I'd just like to thank um, Director Stark and all the staff that support the HRA and the EDA um, for everything they do, but really specifically the really neat, innovative um, programs and solutions that staff is always coming up with to address, you know, our residents, our small businesses, our, our most pressing housing needs in Richfield. Um, to the point where, you know, cities all over the metro come to us constantly saying, how did you do that? Can, can we copy that model? Can we do the same thing as well? And, and that's nothing new. That's something that has been going on for a very long time, but that um, the work of the HRA and the work of the EDA is because the exceptional staff we have doing some pretty cool and innovative things for our community. 
Other comments? I would like to echo that sentiment. Thank you so much for all the great work that you're all doing. If there are no further comments, Administrative Assistant Dubois, would you please call the roll? Yes, thank you. Chair Supple? Aye. Commissioner Elliott? Aye. Commissioner Regan Gonzalez? Aye. Commissioner Vries Daniels? Aye. Commissioner Sandel? Aye. We have five ayes, thank you. All right. Well, welcome back, Executive Director Stark. Thank you. <laughs> Next, we'll move on to consideration of an authorization of the Executive Director to amend the professional services agreement with volunteers enlisted to assist people for providing emergency rent assistance as the need arises. Executive Director Sark. Yes, thank you. Uh, Housing and Redevelopment Manager Julie Urban has been managing this process and I would ask her to provide the staff report, please. Thank you, uh, Executive Director Stark, uh, Chair Supple, and members of the HRA. Um, as you know, Volunteers Enlisted to Assist People, or VEEP, has provided a significant amount of emergency rent assistance to 618 Richfield households in 2020 who were impacted by the COVID-19 crisis. VEEP received funding from the HRA, as well as Hennepin County and the state of Minnesota to meet this need. At the end of December, the federal government authorized funding specifically for emergency rent assistance. The state anticipates receiving an estimated $375 million in funding, of which suburban Hennepin County is likely to receive around $25 million. VEEP expects that they will receive a portion of these funds to serve renters in Richfield, Bloomington, and Edina. However, the timing of when the funds will be distributed is unknown at this time. VEEP plans to continue serving people in need while waiting for this federal funding, and they do, in fact, have a, a waiting list that they are, are working through. They currently have access to a, a approximately $110,000 in community development block grant funding to serve Richfield and Edina. However, the average amount spent to serve Richfield households in 2020 was between $115,000 and $120,000 a month. So they anticipate a shortfall, but cannot determine a specific amount at this time. Because of this uncertainty, staff is asking that the HRA give the executive director the authority to amend the professional services agreement with VEEP on an ad needed basis, up to a maximum amount of $125,000. The HRA's original expenditure of funds was actually reimbursed by the Federal CARES Act funding that the city received. So the same funding that you approved back in May um, actually remains in the investment earnings of the HRA's capital improvement fund and so is still available to uh, fund this request. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Otherwise, that's the report I have. All right, Executive Director Stark. Yeah, I would just add that the city manager, uh, since we wrote the staff report, has committed to the HRA that if the HRA expends over $100,000 for this purpose, that the city would reimburse the HRA up to 25,000. So for example, if the HRA incurred the entire 125,000 we're discussing, the city would reimburse the HRA 25,000 of that amount. All right, thank you for that. Is there someone that would like to make the motion? So moved, Bruce Daniels. Is there a second? Oh, okay. Gonzalez. All right. It's been moved by Commissioner Vries Daniels and seconded by Commissioner Regan Gonzalez to authorize the executive director to amend the professional services agreement with volunteers assist enlisted to assist people as needed to $125,000. Is there any discussion? Commissioner Vries, or Commissioner Regan Gonzalez, go ahead. Um, I have a question and a comment. Um, I'll just say the comment first. As COVID continues and the impacts, I'm really worried about what's going to happen when the eviction moratorium is lifted. And so I don't know if there's um, updates as we get more information that can come to the HRA. But I'm just thinking, how do we advocate at the state level with VEEP and our other partners? Um, I think of, of Chair Supple in the schools and our students and just the impact. So this is kind of 
right, uh, a response to the immediate need, but it's a part of a bigger picture. And so that's just a discussion item that I kind of want to keep talking through as, as we advance. Um, and then my question is, uh, I haven't heard from residents at the beginning of when um, we allocated funds the first time folks were calling and saying, hey, I'm not getting through. And I know there was kinks that were that we had to iron out. I'm assuming those kinks have been all ironed out in the process. They're doing great outreach and things are going well. I haven't heard anything from residents, which makes me think that might be the case. But I just wanted to check um, because I know our staff has been working hard on that item as well and um, working in partnership with VEEP on it. Um, Ms. Urban, go ahead. Want me to respond? So the first point, there is um, a housing stability group that the state, the Minnesota Housing Finance Agency is convening right now. And, and they did come and speak. I'm part of various groups of cities that meet semi-regularly to talk about stuff. And, and so they did get some feedback from us. They were going to be talking to landlords and service providers and gathering input. And it's my understanding that the governor has heard that we we really need to see a plan for how and when that will end. Um, and so so my hope is that the state is doing work on that. I don't know in terms of like talking to the legislator, legislature what might be needed, but um, so, so I know they're very much aware and cities are letting them know and, and you know, landlords who just don't know or renters when it's ending, right? We wait every month for him to renew and we assume he will, but so anyway, that, that's all I know about that right now. And then the other piece, there is still a wait, um, which is, I'm sure, very frustrating and hard for folks. Um, but they have hired staff. They, they do get um, admin dollars, so they have been able to hire staff. And, and they hired um, at least two, if not three, bilingual staff. So that, that's been... Um, a great asset um, for them and for the community. So um, I think, yeah, a lot of those initial kinks are worked out. Of course, what happens um, when, when the state money came along? So the county had some money and they set up a portal and then the state set up a portal and I found it confusing. I didn't think the county's website was terribly easy to use. Um, so we we told people to call VEEP in part because if you didn't qualify for one of those pots of money, VEEP has some other funds that they might be able to help you with, or they can say, you know what, we can at least get you some more food, right? So we always like to send people to VEEP. We anticipate that the state's portal will be similar with this next um, round of funding, but maybe the county's going to want their own portal. It's, so so we don't know, but at this point, I think it's always safe to say, call Veep, but you may have to be patient. It may be a few days before they get back to you, but you need to leave a message and, um, that, you know, they're doing their best to serve folks. Like back in December, they um, were hit with, I can't even remember how many hundreds of applications in one weekend. And so there's only so much they can do, but they are open for business. They will um, be serving folks. And that's part of why they're asking for some funds to just help them to be able to continue to do that. I mean. The federal money would pay for back rent, but that just isn't an, uh, an acceptable answer to folks from Veep's perspective to say, well, come call back in March or April and then we'll help you. So um, anyway, so so they're doing the best they can and we know there is a wait and that's unfortunate, but um, more more money will help will help that a lot. So it's very exciting that so much in federal funding is coming our way. Thank you, Manager Urban. Um, Commissioner Freeze Daniels, did you have an additional question? Um, I'm very supportive of this. I think as we think about, you know, when we talked about this last May of this is the emergency fund that we want to be using this. But can you remind me how much um, money we have in the capital improvement fund currently? Anyway. So it is around 125,000. Okay. It's slightly more, 125,000 and change. So that is where we had established. I think, John, well, I didn't ask for a new number. It might be higher now. Yeah, I mean, my recollection is it's, first of all, it's a million dollars. And the, I think it's 137,000. Oh, okay. Is my last uh, act. Okay. Because I, I, why I ask is, you know, I don't foresee this need going away anytime soon, right? And so um, ideally, we continue to get federal and state funds to help this, but I'm um, just wondering like what our capacity is as we think about this ongoing, um, even beyond the pandemic. So 
Thank you. Are there additional questions? I have a related question. When you were at the discussions with the governor, was anything talked about with homeowners with mortgage forbearance or anything with that? Or is that another issue we'll have to deal with down the road? So there was some money available. Um, I believe Cap HC was who served Richfield. Um, they there weren't there wasn't a huge number um, like there were um, in terms of rent. So so money was available and. Um, while there are no federal funds coming to, to continue that, um, the county has some emergency CDBG left, and I believe their intention is to hang on to that. Now, they're originally going to give it out to providers, and then the federal money came through, and they said, well, you know what, maybe we need to hold on to that for homeowner assistance. So, so, so there is that potential. Um, we don't see the need as great at this point, but that certainly could be coming as well. And I know there's some other communities that are, are very concerned. We don't want a repeat of the foreclosure crisis. I think, you know, one of the advantages with homeownership is that there is a longer period of time before, um, you know, to get through that foreclosure process and that forbearance is an option. And, and what we encourage folks to do is to call a, a home ownership counselor. And we do have some um, links to that on our website under housing. And, and they can help, you know, how do you negotiate that? How, how, who do you contact? And, and so definitely if people homeowners need help, they should start there with a home ownership counselor and then hang on because I think that there will be some funds coming. All right, thank you. Are there any additional questions? All right, then we will take the vote. Um, Administrative Assistant Dubois? Yes, thank you. Chair Seppel? Aye. Commissioner Elliott? Aye. Commissioner Regan Gonzalez? Aye. Commissioner Vries Daniels? Aye. Commissioner Sandal? Aye. Five eyes, thank you. Thank you. Um, next, we're going to move on to the HRA discussion items. Do any of the commissioners have anything you'd like to discuss? If Commissioner I mean. Sandal? Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I was reading in the morning paper that the city council had um, decided it was not the time to um, look at having um, any influencer control over the um, American Legion site going forward. And I recall we discussed, um, or rec I think we talked about it, maybe it was a study session about doing a study for that whole area. Has that been decided not to be done then? No, the study is going forth. <clears throat> um, we wanted to determine the uh, desire for and the uh, capacity to build a community center on the site before proceeding with the study because the study would have looked a little different depending on the answer to that question. So the study is actually beginning in earnest now. Um, Melissa Palman is kind of heading up the team for that. Uh, the, um, the firm of Poison Kogler Group Incorporated who also did the comprehensive plan, they're helping us with this. Um, Melissa, I don't know if you have anything you wanna add. Um, I would just say that work has already begun. We've started reaching out um, to property owners to set up initial meetings. And uh, we're working on a public engagement plan and getting a schedule in place to make sure that we can complete this study in this compressed um, time frame. So thing, things are moving along already. Thank you. All right, thank you. Commissioner Elliott. Um, yes. Um, I wanted to make a note back in, I guess it would have been sometime late 2018 when I interviewed for uh, uh, a seat on this commission. Um, I'd indicated that one of the reasons I want to stay, stay on the HRA and the EDA was because there were some things in the pipeline I wanted to see finished. And like they say, timing is somewhat exquisite because Emmy was one, I think, is the last one that was in the pipeline back then when I interviewed. And one of the, it wasn't a promise, but one of the things I told Mayor Raven Gonzalez and the council members at that time is that I anticipated uh, being, seeing these things through to fruition in two years. And like I said, timing is exquisite because Emmy was the last one. Um, I talked to Executive Director Stark 
in December and indicated that uh, this would be my last year and I was going to open a seat uh, for the the mayor to to put someone else in place. And I think it's it's along the lines that I don't feel necessarily timed out, but there is are new visions and new things happening out in the world. And I think you need younger eyes or at least younger than me viewing those and, and giving input to the rest of the members on the commission and the ADA. So this will be my last meeting. The one thing I'm going to ask one of you or whoever replaces me is to occasionally challenge executive director Stark because someone needs to keep him humble. So, and if he goes without challenges, you're going to see things happen. And, and, and he's even going to look more professorial and start doing Socratic method, working with you people. And I don't want to see that happen. So keep an eye on it. But thank you very much. It's, it's been a great 12 years. And I can honestly say um, there are ups and downs, uh, foreclosure things and everything else, but it is a pleasure working with everybody that works at the city. It's a pleasure working with council members, commissioners, and everything else. And I, I thoroughly enjoyed every minute of it. So thank you all. Commissioner Elliott, I would like to first of all say thank you for all of your service. You have been a voice of wisdom for us and we really truly appreciate all of your service. Are there other discussion items or comments? All right, Commissioner Brees Daniels. I just want to say Commissioner Elliott, we will I will miss you. And uh, I wish you well in any future projects you take on. I know you'll still probably be very involved with the city. So um, sad to see you go. Thank you. Commissioner Regan Gonzalez. I'd also like to just say thank you so much, Commissioner Elliott, for your leadership, for your mentorship, for your guidance. You even got to be a part of seeing the 77th Street underpass through as well and so many other great projects. Uh, so thank you for everything that you've done and, you know, I'll call you and get your counsel every now and then. Thanks for your, for your leadership. Well, thank you. Commissioner Sandal. I would say farewell, Pat, and good luck, and I hope to meet you in Arizona one of these days. Hmm. Uh, well, I can meet you in Florida next week, so... Oh, well, oh, well. <laughs> Enjoyed working with you and good luck. Thank you. I appreciate that. You will and thank you, Miss. Thank you so much. Thanks. Are there any other comments, questions, or discussion items? Then we'll move on to the executive director's report. The only thing I have to add is related to um, Commissioner Elliott's announcement and that is uh i've been working with the city manager's office kelly Wynn, and, and specifically on the recruiting uh, process and the recruiting for the hra if folks remember works a little differently than it does for other commissions uh it's uh, uh i don't remember the exact terminology but it's an appointment by the mayor and a confirmation by the remainder of the council and so kelly and staff will be working with um Commissioner Reagan Gonzalez and her role as mayor uh, to have that happen as, as quickly as possible. So if you know of people, um, you might want to speak with Commissioner Reagan Gonzalez. That's all I have to add. All right, thank you. Any questions for the executive director? Okay, then we'll move on to claims. Move approval. Second. Commissioner Standall has moved approval of claims and Commissioner Breeze Daniels has seconded. Any discussion? Great. Administrative Assistant Dubois. Thank you. Chair Supple. Aye. Commissioner Elliott. Aye. Commissioner Regan Gonzalez. Aye. Commissioner Breeze Daniels. Aye. Commissioner Sandal. Aye. Bye-bye. Yep, Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have now completed all business for the HRA meeting and will stand adjourned. Um, do we need to have any delay before we go into the EDA meeting or can we move right into that?
believe we can move immediately into the EDA meeting. All right. Well, then I'm going to call to order the January 19th Economic Development Authority meeting for the city of Richfield. It is 7.45 p.m. I'll start with attendance. Thank you. Thank you. President Supple? Here. Commissioner Elliott? Here. Commissioner Regan Gonzalez? Here. Commissioner Freeze Daniels? Here. Commissioner Sandel? Here. We have five members present. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we will consider the election of officers for the Richfield EDA Authority for 2021. Is there, are there any nominations for president? I nominate Mary Supple for president of the EDA. I'll second that, Regan Gonzalez. Okay, it's been um, moved and seconded. Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? All right, hearing none, we'll take the vote on Mary Supple as president. Thank you, President Supple. Aye. Commissioner Elliott. Aye. Commissioner Regan Gonzalez. Aye. Commissioner Vries Daniels. Aye. Commissioner Sandal. Aye. We have five ayes. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any nominations for vice president? I move um, Mayor Regan Gonzalez. All right. We've nominated Mayor Regan Gonzalez. Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Hearing none, we'll take the vote for um, Commissioner Regan Gonzalez as Vice President. Thank you, President Supple. Aye. Commissioner Elliott. Aye. Commissioner Regan Gonzalez. Aye. Commissioner Bruce Daniels. Aye. Commissioner Sandel. We have five eyes. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we will have a nominations for treasurer. Currently, that's Commissioner Sandel. Nominate Commissioner Sandel for treasurer. I'll second that, Maria Regan Gonzalez. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to nominate Commissioner Sandel. Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Having asked three times and hearing none, we will take the vote. Thank you, President Supple. Aye. Commissioner Elliott. Aye. Commissioner Regan Gonzalez. Aye. Commissioner Breeze Daniels. Aye. Commissioner Sandel. Aye. We have five ayes, thank you. Thank you, we have elected Commissioner Sandel as treasurer. Next, we have nominations for secretary, currently administrative assistant to what holds that role? Commissioner Brees Daniels. I would nominate, uh, uh, sorry, for Secretary Assistant Dubois. All right, go ahead. Second that, Regan Gonzalez. All right, are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Having asked three times and hearing none, we'll take the vote for Administrative Assistant Dubois to be Secretary. Thank you, President Supple. Aye. Commissioner Elliott. Aye. Commissioner Regan Gonzalez. Aye. Commissioner Vries Daniels. Aye. Commissioner Sandal. Aye. We have five ayes. Thank you. All right, we've elected our secretary, Mr. Dubois. Next is for assistant treasurer. And last year it was um, Director Regis. I nominate Chris Regis. All right, Chris Regis has been nominated. Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Having asked three times and hearing none, we will take the vote for Chris Regis as assistant treasurer. Thank you, President Supple. Aye. Commissioner Elliott. Aye. Commissioner Regan Gonzalez. Aye. Commissioner Bruce Daniels. Aye. Commissioner Sandel. Aye. 
Advice, thank you. All right, thank you. Next, we will move on to open forum. Would you please tell us the procedure for that, Assistant Dubois? Yes, thank you, President Seppel. To call in to participate in the live open forum, you can call 612-861-0651. And as you call in, a moderator will assist you. And as always, you can always send your comments ahead of time to either Director Stark or myself. And President Seppel, we currently do not have any callers on the line. All right, thank you. We'll wait a minute. Has anyone else called in? We have not received any calls, President Seppel. All right, then let's move on to the approval of the minutes. So moved, Regan Gonzalez. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Commissioner Regan Gonzalez and seconded by Commissioner Zandal to approve the minutes of the EDA of December 21st, 2020. Is ready for the discussion. Hearing none, we'll put it to a vote. Thank you, President Seppel. Aye. Commissioner Elliott. Aye. Commissioner Regan Gonzalez. Aye. Commissioner Breeze Daniels. Aye. Commissioner Sandal. Aye. We have five ayes. Thank you, we've approved the minutes. Next, we have approval of the agenda. So moved, um, Commissioner Regan Gonzalez. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded to approve the agenda. Any further questions? Hearing none, would you please call the roll? Yes, thank you, President Supple. Aye. Commissioner Elliott. Aye. Commissioner Regan Gonzalez. Aye. Commissioner Breeze Daniels. Aye. Commissioner Sandal. Aye. We have five ayes, thank you. All right, thank you. Whoops, next we'll move to the consent calendar, Executive Director Stark. Thank you, President Seppel. Uh, tonight we have one item on the consent calendar that would be read in title only um, and once we read the title and you approve that item, no further discussion would be necessary. Tonight's item is consideration of resolutions designating official depositories for the Economic Development Authority for 2021, including the approval of collateral. And that concludes the consent calendar. Thank you. Move Thank approval. You, Move right. approval of the consent calendar. Is there a second? Second, Regan Gonzalez. Okay, it's been moved by Commissioner Sandal and seconded by Commissioner Regan Gonzalez to approve the consent calendar. Any questions for staff? All right, hearing none, please call the roll. Thank you, President Seppel. Aye. Commissioner Elliott. Aye. Commissioner Regan Gonzalez. Aye. Commissioner Vries Daniels. Aye. Commissioner Sandal? Aye. We have five ayes, thank you. Thank you. Next, we move on to designation of Community De Development Director John Stark as the Executive Director of the Richfield Economic Development Authority of 2021. Is there a report, Mr. Stark? Thank you. Uh, in September of 2018, I was first appointed by the Richfield EDA to serve as, as its Executive Director. Uh, last January, that appointment was reaffirmed for the year 2020. Uh, and so we are now asking that you consider uh, me as your executive director for calendar year 2021. Uh, I would also add that um, for both this position and for the um, executive director of the HRA, I am, um, I am extremely humbled to serve in this position. 
um, and grateful to work with um, such dedicated public officials. And I, uh, it's it's the favorite part of my job is uh, serving as the executive director. So with that, I would stand for any questions you might have. All right, would someone like to move the point designation? Okay. All right. Commissioner Regan Gonzalez. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Chair Supple. I will move the designation. Second. All right. It's been moved by Commissioner Regan Gonzalez and seconded by Commissioner Bruce Daniels to designate Community Development Director John Stark as the EDA Executive Director until the first regular meeting is conducted by the EDA Authority or Economic <coughs> Development Authority in 2022. All right, are there any questions or discussion? All right, well, I'm very happy that you're going to continue in this role and I've been really happy with all the work we've done to help our local businesses. Any further comments? All right, then um, Administrative Assistant Dubois, if you could call the Yes, thank you, President Simple. Aye. Commissioner Elliott? Aye. Commissioner Regan Gonzalez? Aye. Commissioner Vries Daniels? Aye. Commissioner Sandal? Aye. We have five ayes, thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to consideration of a memorandum of understanding for the continued partnership with the Center for Energy and, and the Environment in administering the Richfield Energy Efficient Business Grant. Executive Director Stark. Thank you, President Supple. In 2019, the Richfield EDA directed staff to create a grant program to assist Richfield businesses in making improvements to their property to make it more energy efficient. On January 21st of this year, the uh, I'm sorry, of last year, the EDA approved a memorandum of understanding or MOU with the Center for Energy and the Environment, CEE, to assist EDA staff in administering this program. Staff is recommending the EDA continue this relationship with CEE by approving an updated MOU, which is attached. The Richfield Energy Efficient Grant Program provides 20% of the cost of installation of qualified upgrades, primarily in lighting, refrigeration, and rooftop HVAC units to Richfield businesses. These improvements are also eligible for additional rebates from Minnesota utility companies. CEE receives funding from the utility companies to assist businesses as part of their incentive program. So CEE does not charge the EDA for this service. In 2020, the EDA budgeted 20,000 in grants for businesses, plus an additional thousand dollars for marketing. In fiscal year 2020, the EDA has provided nearly 19,000 in grants to 12 businesses or nonprofit entities to improve 15 buildings, and we've attached that list. Uh, the one thing I would note about that list is with the um, COVID loan program, that was really intended for for-profit businesses. And so I am glad to see so many schools, churches, and other nonprofit businesses taking advantage of this energy efficiency program as a way to make sure that uh, the EDA is helping both uh, for-profit and nonprofit businesses. For 2021, the approved ED budget includes $115,000 in business assistance funding. This funding would be used to cover the displaced business grant that we discussed last month of $40,000. This energy grant uh, in the amount of $20,000 plus the remainder of $55,000 plus any available reserves from unspent business assistance money from prior years for a revolving loan fund. Um, I would also add that on, as I say, ED, uh, uh, sorry, the CEE group is in administering this for us. That doesn't mean that there isn't a, a good deal of work for Richfield staff to do to provide these. And um, Assistant uh, Dubois has really taken charge of that process. Uh, and uh, I'm just glad to report to you that uh, she's such a valuable asset to, to you and the department and thank her for her work in that. With, uh, with that, I would stand for any questions you might have. 
All right, um, Commissioner Vries Daniels. This is more just a curiosity. It looks like the majority of the loans have, have gone through in the past month. Is that typical or is that due to just these times we're living in currently of, of trying to get things done? And Yeah, I think it's, a, it's two things. One is we did, um, during COVID, we informed CEE that our focus was to provide the business uh, grants or forgivable loans to businesses. And we kind of asked them to uh, pause their activities. Uh, then we asked them to restart that in uh, about September. Uh, and so then that's, uh, that's why we had somebody come in right at the end of the year. I'm glad that we were able to expend essentially all of the money though. Yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you. Other questions or comments? And again, thank you, um, Administrative Assistant Dubois, because I think this is really important. And I was pleased to see that there were so many nonprofits that took advantage of it. Are there any other questions or comments? Then we'll take the vote. Thank you. And thank you, Executive Director Stark and President Seppel. Okay, President Seppel. Aye. Commissioner Elliott? Aye. Commissioner Regan Gonzalez? Aye. Commissioner Fries Daniels? Aye. Commissioner Sandal? Aye. We have five ayes. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to EDA discussion items. Do any of the commissioners have items they wish to discuss? Hearing none, we'll move on to the executive director's report. I would just report that at next month's HRA and EDA meetings, uh, we will be providing the year in review, which I know is something that uh, that I've heard commissioners express uh, they really appreciate. So look forward to that. Um, if there's anything in particular you want covered in the review, if you could let me know soon, uh, we could try to make sure we're covering it. And with that, that's all I have to report. Thank you. Are there any questions for Executive Director Stark? All right, thank you. Then we'll be moving on to claims. Commissioner Elliott, would you like to do the final motion here? So moved. Second. All right, it's been moved by Commissioner Elliott and seconded by Commissioner Sandal to move the claims. Any discussion? All right, please call the roll. Thank you, President Seppel. Aye. Commissioner Elliott? Aye. Commissioner Regan Gonzalez? Aye. Commissioner Vries Daniels? Aye. Commissioner Sandal? Aye. We have five ayes. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, we stand adjourned. Thank you, Commissioner Elliott. Thanks, Pat. Thanks, Paul. Love you all.